30 days has September, April, June, and November, and February if you lived in Sweden in 1712. Welcome back to Now I Know, I'm Matt Silverman, and the only reason today is Wednesday is because the entire world agrees that it is Wednesday, my dudes. There is no fundamental property of the universe that governs a date, in the same way that green paper or shiny shells or data on a blockchain has no inherent value unless multiple parties agree that it is money. My dudes. So goes the story of February 30th, a date that sounds weird to modern ears, but had its day in the 18th century thanks to people not understanding astronomy. As you probably know, in the modern Gregorian calendar, the one we all agree to use, February usually has 28 days, and we add an extra day every four years. Unless the year is divisible by 100, and also not divisible by 400? This compensates for the fact that the Earth's orbit is not precisely 365 days, so leap years keep our seasons and holidays from drifting all over the calendar. In the late 1500s, Europe and Northern Africa used the Julian calendar, a 365.25 day calendar originally decreed by Julius Caesar. The Earth actually takes slightly less time to orbit the Sun, so after a few centuries, the seasons started to fall out of sync. Pope Gregory XIII was concerned that Easter was no longer lining up with the spring equinox. In 1582, he fixed this with the Gregorian calendar, which had fewer leap years than the Julian calendar. Most Catholic nations adopted it by jumping directly from October 4th to October 15th. They just agreed that in 1582, October 5th through the 14th no longer exists. To which most Europeans responded, what's a calendar? I don't even know how to read. But not all countries followed suit. The Swedish Empire, which includes modern day Finland, was like, nah. But the Gregorian calendar was so ubiquitous that the Swedes finally decided to join the party in the late 1600s. The Swedes devised a plan to ease their way back into the Gregorian system. Instead of just slicing 11 days off their calendar, they decided to ignore all the leap years between 1700 and 1740, thereby losing 11 days over four decades. On March 1st, 1740, the Swedes and the rest of the West would sink perfectly, except they screwed it up. For some reason, they forgot to skip the leap years in 1704 and 1708. You had one job, Ludwig. It's just counting. So now Sweden was out of sync with the Gregorian calendar and the Julian holdout nations, just floating free on the river of time. Missing dentist appointments and forgetting birthdays? It's crazy! The Swedish king decided to fix the problem in 1712. The Swedish chef, on the other hand, honestly didn't even really notice. But instead of just dropping 10 days and joining the Gregorian calendar in one shot, he went back to the Julian calendar and added two leap days to 1712 to make up for the missing day in 1700. One was the regular Julian leap day, and the other, as seen in a Swedish almanac from that year, is February 30th. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to make your brain a little bit bigger, consider subscribing to Now I Know. It's a daily email newsletter coming right at your inbox, full of fascinating facts and interesting stories like this one. And if you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing to Now I Know, the show, on YouTube and Facebook. For now, I'm Matt Silverman, and I'll catch you at a later date.